Hello everyone, welcome to Sukiyo's Our Channel. Today I'm going to be working on a commission that was requested of me by DG Graphics. Thank you DG Graphics for leaving a comment on my previous video and for the commission. It makes me really happy that people are watching and that they are interested in me producing works for them. So thank you for that. He requested that I draw a dolphin uh, in aquarelles, which means watercolors. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. These are the Sakura Koi watercolors pocket field sketchbook. So it's perfect for this uh, kind of stuff. So if you want to go outside and you want to sketch and you want to paint what you see, um, this is the kind of um, watercolors that you'd want to take with you. You see how you have this little setup like this. It's a little bit bigger than my Cotman uh, watercolor set, which um, I did consider, but I didn't bring because it's really small and I just I felt like there wasn't enough uh, selection. So looking at the box, this is the presentation. It tells you how to use it if you go outside. So you can see that um, if I open the box, you have this little palette here, which is really handy. That's what I'm going to be using today to mix my colors. So you open it. As you saw earlier, the palette comes in like this. It goes into these little circular grooves here. It has these little legs. And then you take it out and you can put it here like this. Or uh, you can put it here, or you can put it here. This one kind of covers the colors though, the, the first row of colors, so you might not want to do it in this setup. I'll probably just put it on top of the table so I have full access to the, to the box. But if you're outside, probably do it like this and just mix the colors on the side, which I think is really handy. There's also this little, um, this ring, which you can use like if you wanted to use this as a prop palette or maybe use your thumb i'm not sure I'm not sure I, you'd use your thumb for a palette wouldn't you uh, there you go probably i'm right-handed so i'll probably use it like this Ugh, i don't know how to use it guys and i find it really uncomfortable so i probably wouldn't use it okay so one of the reds i think it's uh vermilion it's coming off but there's some glue there So in here there was a brush and the brush is here. The reason why I've taken it out is because the brush comes divided into two pieces that you have to put together and once it's uh, put together you can't put it back in the box. And I wanted to fill it up with water so I didn't have to go back inside so I didn't bother putting it back into the box because I wouldn't be able to fit it in anyway after it's put together. So yeah, that's where the brush comes in. And then you have these little sponges and the sponges are really helpful. They are to like say you're going from um, a green to a red and you don't want to mix the green with the red you kind of like just wipe the, the brush on the sponge until the color is removed and then you can move on to the next color without mixing the two if that's not what you want to do so so yeah at the top here you can say it says fine quality transparent watercolors and then it says ideal for plain air painting and what that means is uh, plain air just means painting outside like if you want to sketch something that's in front of you which is something that I will be trying because I'm it, I, yeah I don't think it's something I've ever done before and I think it'll be really calming and fun and then you have little colors here but you don't have the name of the colors but on the back it does give you the name of the colors so it gives you the water brush instructions which is great but I've already done that that's fine then brush care and caution fair enough um, Okay, and then you have the color list. So the other thing I want to say about this that I think is really cool, if you look at the picture, you'll see the reason why they have this is because if you're outside, you can put a little paper in here and you can paint directly on it and use this like, um, like an easel, which is really cool. So yeah, I think overall this box is really nice. It has everything you need if you want to do plain air painting and I think it's really handy. Of course, if you run out of water on the brush, uh, I'm not sure what you do, but the, you know that that's the uh, that's just the way water brushes work. At least they exist, and you don't have to bring cups of water around. So I'm not complaining. <laughs> okay, cool. This is Sakura Koi. We're made in Japan, I believe. Let's see. Does it say where it was made? 
Uh, it was made in China. Okay, fair enough. But the company is Japanese. It's based in Osaka in Japan. Now, you will notice that this shot is quite different from the ones you see in the rest of this video. In re-watching the video, I noticed that there were a few things that I either got wrong or that I didn't show you because of the camera placement. So this is the actual box. As you can see, it says Koi Watercolors. Uh, the Sakura is there at the top, that's the symbol and, and the name of the, the, the company, I believe. And this is the name of the brand of this particular watercolor set. And then at the bottom here, right, it shows you what the box looks like on the inside and how you can use it, okay? And then it tells you the contents of the box. And then up here, it says fine quality transparent watercolors. They were transparent. I would say they are fine quality for a student grade watercolor and I did really enjoy using them but I found them to be more opaque uh, than you know the write-up makes it out and certainly more opaque than what I'm used to other watercolors. So uh, right that's not necessarily a bad thing I'm just saying that was my experience. And that's what it says at the bottom Okay, that's what it says on the side. And that's what it says on the other side. Up here we have this blue bit which again just tells you what's inside the box. That there are 24 colors and you have the symbol of the company, Sakura. Okay. It says open lid surfaces easel, colors formulated to blend easily. And then it's in French and in Spanish. And I agree, I think the colors do blend easily, okay? Then here you can see it shows you how you can set up the palette. But just underneath that, you can see how you're supposed to put the finger in the ring, which are instructions that I didn't follow for some reason. And then underneath that, you can see how they show you you know, the, how they show how you can use the lid as an easel. And then right next to that, you have the instructions for how to use the water brush in English, French, and Spanish again. And then underneath it says brush care and caution, and it says rinse the brush to keep it clean, drain the barrel and dry the brush tip if it is not used for a long period. And again, it's in French and Spanish. Okay, and under that you just have like a, a, a color chart with all the color names, which is great because the color names are not on the actual pens themselves. So this is fantastic. This is what it looks like on the sides. There you have it. And then at the bottom, which has the little ring I spoke about. Okay, so now if I open this, you can see the palette and you can see the water brush. Now, let me talk about the palette before I talk about the water brush. For some reason during the video, I only showed you the three positions available, the three out of four positions available on where you can place your palette. In fact, I would say there's, there's actually five. You can also put it at the bottom here. Okay. And in my opinion, this is probably the best place, especially if you're using the lid as an easel. The point of this box is to make it easy for plein air painting, right? So for me, I would say this is the best position to put it in because it's not covering any of the sponges and it's not covering the first row of colors. You can also, of course, put it on the lid like so if you're not using the lid as an easel. Now, if you put the water brush together, as I mentioned, you can't put it back in. So I think I said that this was a flaw on their part because you can't put it back in. Originally, when I got this brush, this bit, like it says on the box, came with a black cap, okay? And so the black cap was inserted in here, okay? And this was down like this, without any water, obviously, and uh, the brush was in like that. And I was so stupid that for some reason I didn't consider that the point of this is that you're obviously meant to fill the body of the brush with water, put in the black cap, put the body of the brush back inside the box, and put the brush inside the box. And then you close it, like so, 
you take it out wherever you're going to the field or to the beach or to the mountains and then you take it apart like so you take the brush remove the black cap and put the brush together and of course the water is already inside so you don't have to refill your brush anywhere because you've already come prepared and I think that's amazing that they thought of all of this I think that's really really clever and it's so silly of me to not consider this and unfortunately I have lost my black cap I have no idea where it's gone so I can't use the brush the way it's intended to be um, but for those of you who are considering buying this set don't get rid of your black cap if you did want to use this set for plein air painting and you just wanted to use it exactly as it is okay you can uh, you can put the brush back in you can put the palette back in if you're going to use the lid as an easel just put a paper in there before you leave the house and you basically have everything you need okay so um, some people have these spritzers when it comes to this type of watercolor where what they do is they take the spritzer and spritz the paint and it makes them easier to lift off but I don't have that. <laughs> so. And you know what? I think that's good actually because it means that we'll see. It's a better test for the paints to see how easy they are to lift off with the help of aids for people who don't have the money to buy spritzers. We'll find out. Okay, they lift off quite easily. Oops. Okay. Alright, they are transparent, but they seem actually uh, opaque for one color. Oh, that's nice and vibrant. Oh, very nice. They are very easy to lift off. I mean, as I said, I'm not even using a spritzer. And they just came off, like, really nicely. <laughs> they definitely feel like they're better quality than the two ones. This permanent yellow deep, I'd say it's pretty close to this one. But I say this one is still a little bit darker than that one. And again, this one is it's the um, same concept, but it, an even bigger difference on the paper. It doesn't look as dark, in my opinion, as it does on that. And it looks much more yellowish. I think that one looks a bit more greenish slash brownish. Maybe it's just me. And this yellow looks like a lemon yellow here. But here, I would say it looks more like a neon yellow. Again, it may be my brain interpreting things differently, but... And see, when you take it out, it looks so much darker. So once it's on the paper, it dries lighter. God, it's so nice. I just want to make it clear that when I'm putting the brush on the on the pan. I'm only, um, first of all, I'm adding quite a bit of water um, in order to get the paint to come off. But also, um, I'm only only like swishing it around for a few seconds and already so much paint is coming off it's it's really nice I 
one thing I like about these paints is that unlike the tube ones, they're not streaky, which is really nice. I'm sure both will look better once I start using them on a more expensive paper. Um, but I like that they're not streaky. That's really good. One thing I wanted to show you guys about this brush that came with the Sakura Koi um, watercolors is that you can take the tip and pull it out and it grows longer which I found out by accident and that's really cool um, I personally don't like it this long because I find that I have less control uh, when it's this long but yeah it, it's an option it's there if you need it I have never seen this in other watercolor brushes so I was quite impressed okay this one is a bit streaky that's disappointing. So I noticed that this one was a little bit streaky when I first started using it. But once I added a little bit more color to the brush, it was okay. It's not as streaky as I thought. I think it's streakier than the others. I um, don't think it's as opaque or as good quality. But then this is like a pinkish red. Uh, crimson Lake apparently, so I don't know, with more naturally fugitive colors they tend to... I think you have to put extra work into making them look good. Yeah, I think it's quite opaque for watercolor, if that makes sense. Oh, that's not drying very nicely. But then it could be the quality of the paper. <laughs> I know I shouldn't really have done a colors chart on cheap paper. You're actually supposed to do it on the type of paper that you're going to use to make your final drawing on. But I really, really didn't want, didn't want to waste my precious, expensive paper. That's on me. I do like the Sakura Koi colors. I think th they do blend well. That's one thing um, that I will say in comparison with the other ones, like I said before, you can see the edge. Like this is the bit that wasn't diluted with water and this is the bit that is diluted with water. And you can see the clear edge. Not in all of them. Can't see it there or there or there or there. So it's hard to tell with cheap art supplies if I was doing something wrong or if it's the supply itself. It's probably the supply itself. Um, but with these ones, the um, edge is not as apparent. In most of these you can't really see the edge. And with this one, you can see how it blends much, much better than the Children Art one. say guys these sponges are coming in really helpful because you can just like dab your brush on it to clean it off that's really good mm -hmm.
cheap art supplies. The browns tend to be very vivid and vibrant and, and actually quite opaque. This is probably the most opaque color out of all the ones in the Sakura Koi watercolor set. And that's because brown is an earthy color. It's a natural color. So that's why I was so surprised when this one, you know, so rubbish. <laughs> uh, because look how beautiful this brown is. But I just realized something. Maybe the color on the box is showing what the color looks like once it's been diluted. Because if we compare this one, you know, the purple, the diluted purple to the one on the box, they're actually quite similar, if not almost the same. And again, I'm playing with the burnt umber here. And you'll see that that is actually quite similar to that as well. It's good to know actually that they put the colors on the box as they look once they go on the paper rather than the way they look on the pen because this is more accurate. Ooh, that black is really good guys. Look how deep it gets. I mean, you can dilute it and turn it into a gray, but it's good that it starts out as a black. And then you can do whatever you want from there on. If I use this, my trusty color wheel, we have five different values of black. And value one is 100% black. And if I put it here, I know it's hard to talk because there's a green in the way, but I would say that's as black as that. Obviously there are stages, like, because it's watercolor, that, you know, it's a wash. But the bits where it's pure color, I would say as deep as that one. Okay guys, that's my color chart done. So I've swatched the Children Arts one. And I swatched the Sakura Koi. So now I'm gonna draw my dolphin. Let's see what that is. Okay guys, so uh, this is where I begin to make my painting. At this point when I did this dolphin I recorded this a few months ago actually and I'm only uploading the video now and it's taken me a long time actually to work on this video. Many many days of editing, many different sound recordings. It's, it's actually been one of the uh, toughest videos to edit to be fair. Here I am drawing um, the dolphin. I, I understand that some people don't enjoy watching the drawing bit, depending on who you are as a person. I decided that I'm going to film everything for those of you out there who like to see how people draw because everyone has different techniques and everyone draws in different ways. I'm still learning and you're supposed to draw some things from your shoulder rather than from your wrist. <laughs> so here I am drawing everything from the wrist, including the circles. And as I later learned, this is not a good thing. It's actually much easier to draw circles from the shoulder, you have more control and the circles come out looking much more circly, <laughs> much more round, <laughs> much more like proper circles rather than weird circly shaped blobs. I would definitely recommend drawing from the shoulder as much as you can. Don't draw everything from the wrist because obviously your wrist is limited because it can only take you so far. There are lots of videos on YouTube that talk more in depth about that. You know, feel free to research that if you're interested. Definitely my recommendation, if I was to redraw this again, that's what I would have done. Drawn much more from the shoulder rather than relying on drawing from the wrist all the time. Anyway, uh, regardless, uh, I am happy with the way this turned out. It took me about an hour to make just the outline of the dolphin. I wanted to keep it very simple because uh, I was going to create the rest with color rather than with lines. Somebody requested that I drew a dolphin. I announced at the beginning of the video that it was DG Graphics. So I was creating this for him and I have used watercolor before. I think when we're kids, the two main... Uh, art supplies that we start out with tend to be 
graphite pencils first, then colored pencils, then watercolors, because there's a lot of colored pencils and, and watercolors for children. And they're easy mediums to use. Also, as a kid, if you get watercolor on your clothes, it's very easy to wash off. So um, they're good mediums for kids. So I think at one point or another, we've all used colored pencils and watercolors at least once in our lives. But I'm not proficient with watercolors. I've actually used watercolors more since this dolphin drawing. So I'm slowly getting better at using watercolors. But when I made this painting, it was my first time using them on a professional level. And you can tell because I actually made a mistake, as you'll see later on. You can, I guess, use the white if you have a watercolor set that comes with white. But you're not really supposed to rely on the white to create like highlights. You're supposed to leave the bits and blobs on the paper that you want to remain white or you want to look white. So you're supposed to actually draw these bits in so you know to paint around them, which you'll notice I did not do in this drawing because I was a rookie at <laughs> using watercolor at this point. I'm still a rookie, but I'm a, I'm a more proficient rookie now. And then later on, again, as you'll see, when I painted the sea, I tried to go over it with white to create some of the waves and that didn't go so well, but it, it was a learning experience. And in spite of that, I still like the way this turned out. I really, really enjoyed creating this painting. It, it was painful though, because the outline I really struggled with, and you can see in the video that I struggled because I keep rubbing bits off. I, I'm not tracing, because I hate tracing for all kinds of different reasons. So I like drawing everything freehand. And I also genuinely believe that you learn more from drawing freehand than you do from tracing. Drawing freehand might be a longer process of learning, but I genuinely think in the long run, it, it teaches you more than tracing does. Okay, that's just, that's just my opinion. And, but yeah, it, it was tough to draw this dolphin, especially the eyes and the mouth. The mouth was really difficult because it's so subtle. There's this line that goes across his little snout. And yeah, getting that right was difficult. And at the end, I was happy with the outline, so I moved on to the painting. If you want it to look like the actual dolphin in the original reference, even if it's not realistic, you have to get the colors right. Getting the colors and the shadows and the lights right is important. So that's difficult because uh, even if you're a professional artist, uh, colors are not still, if that makes sense. They're not stagnant. It's not a case of here's a blue and uh, you're going to look at your palette and bam, there's a blue that looks exactly like the blue you're looking for. Sometimes 
It happens that way, which is great when that happens. It's like amazing. But most of the times that is not the case. Most of the times you have to mix colors to get the, the, you know, the shade that you want. And mixing colors can be a very difficult process. Okay, guys. So I started painting with the Sakura Koi um, watercolors after I did my sketch. And this is the first time I've mixed the colors because when I was doing the color swatch I was just taking them straight out of the uh, pans and um, swatching them on the paper. I mixed two blues in order to try and get the sea blue uh, around the dolphin. But the first thing I noticed is the, the color was really sticky. I don't know, it just I wasn't really enjoying putting the color to the paper. It just felt really sticky and I just want to make it clear that this paper is mixed media I need to look up which one it is but I do believe it's Taylor Rowney mixed media A4 I think it's like 200 or 250 GSM it's good for watercolor for all kinds of water based uh, media pencils inks all kinds of things and the colors to begin with started sticking on the paper which I didn't really like and secondly, I noticed that, I don't know, like, I know these are watercolors and the colors lift off very easily off the paper and that's fine. But I just found that, it's just that there's these particles that are left over, like you can see it on the paper. I don't know, like it's very... streaky, which I don't like. And then if you look at the palette, so for example, if I mix it together, you can see it straight away, it's not obvious. That's how I mix my two blues. But then, once the water starts running down, you can see the particles, whatever those particles are, slowly breaking away from the water, which is really strange to me. I've never seen paint do that. And I felt like the paper sucked in the color too quickly. And when I, like there were times when I tried to lift off the color of, uh, of the paper and I wasn't very successful at it, which is not good because one of the advantages of using watercolor is that you're able to lift off color whenever you want. These are student grade watercolors, so it could be the quality of the watercolor or it could be the paper, it could be a combination of both, but that's why I need to test them again on a different type of paper. It was a sunny day, so I wouldn't be able to say whether the colors dried too quickly because, again, of the paper, the watercolors, or because it was really sunny. But uh, it did bug me a little bit that they dried so quickly. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not an expert, but one of the things that I love about oils is that you're able to kind of go back and mess around with them because they don't dry very quickly. And with watercolors, I mean, at least in with this experience, with this painting, I found that they dried just a little bit too quickly for me. But again, it might not be the watercolors themselves. With acrylic, this is one of the reasons why I struggle with acrylic. I find that they do dry too quickly. I like mixing things on the page. I don't just like mixing them on the palette. So not being able to mix them on the page is a little bit frustrating. And I found that to be the case on this occasion. I think when I make another video testing these watercolors, I'm gonna use proper watercolor paper, which I didn't have at the time, but I do now. That will give me a much better understanding of the watercolors, and then I'll be able to test them and review them properly. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Be that as it may, I managed to make it work on the paper. One of the things that worked really well was that I was able to build up layers. I get the feeling that's to do with the paper <laughs> and not with the watercolors themselves. I would say in general, the watercolors blended very nicely and, and layered very nicely. I was able to mix them very easily on the palette. Didn't have a problem with that at all. Here, I'm painting the fins of the dolphin. For me, that was the most enjoyable bit. I managed to get the colors pretty much right straight away. And I really liked the way the fins turned out. But the rest of the dolphin was a little bit complicated. 
I did like the vibrancy of the colors. I found them to be really beautiful. Even when I mixed the colors together, they didn't come out looking muddy. So that's a mark of a good art medium. You don't want your colors to look muddy. I mean, to get the color of the fins, I mixed black and two blues. It looks really beautiful. And you'll notice on my palette, I have a few shades of red and yellow. That's because while I was making this video, I actually painted something different off camera. And the paper that I used for that other painting was a little bit softer than this one. This one is very coarse, very rough. And I think the watercolors fared better with that one that they did with this type of paper. But again, I mixed colors together on that palette and they didn't come out muddy. So I really enjoyed working with these watercolors, even though they are clearly not light fast because they are not artist grade. In terms of the brush, originally I plan to only use the water brush that came with the, the Sakura Koi set just to check how versatile it was because obviously this is supposed to be a plein air painting kit. So you want a brush that can do quite a few things. I own a lot of water brushes. This is hands down my favorite. I think it's wonderful to paint with but it's not versatile enough. I had to get another brush. I mean, again, it could be because of the paper. When I was painting with a water brush, the watercolor looked a little bit streaky. And so at first I thought, well, maybe it's the quality or the lack of quality of the watercolor. But then I realized it was because I was using just one brush for everything. So I went back to get a, a wider brush, as you can see, this blue brush, which has a wider bottom and it helped spread the color better on the larger areas of the painting. So I was able to get rid of the streakiness, which was great. I would say for a plein air kit, this is probably the only flaw in every other way. I love this kit. I think it's perfect. I think it's wonderful, but I don't think one water brush is gonna give you all the effects or all the control you want, so. But I only use two brushes, so that's not too bad. That's all I really required for this painting. So I think it still shows how versatile the water brush is, how wonderful it is. When drawing the mouth of the dolphin, I felt that the tip was still a little bit too thick. I feel like the mouth, the line of the mouth is supposed to be a little bit thinner than that. And I couldn't get it to be thinner than that because yeah, the brush was just a little bit thicker than I needed it to be.
Uh, here, as you can see, I just painted the snout and it's very streaky, which is why I'm going to go over it with a larger brush to kind of smooth the paint out and give it a more organic look. Maybe if I was painting this on a different paper, that one water brush might have been enough. But on this paper, I, I really needed an extra brush, as you can see. I ended up using a different palette, but then again, it depends how many colors you're mixing. I mean, for this one, being a painting of a dolphin and the water, I'm mostly going to use blues and blacks, so I'm not going to have to mix a lot of colors. If you're out and about and you were painting a farm with lots of trees, fruit trees or flowers or animals, that little palette might not have been sufficient. You might have needed more space. But, you know, it is a small kit. I get what they were going for. They were trying to fit everything into a, a box that's big enough to carry everything that you would need for plein air, but also a box that's small enough that you can carry around with you. So I think overall, they've done really well. Obviously, there's always going to be a compromise on something. Nothing is ever going to be perfect. So considering, I think they've done really well. It was hard to paint dolphin because it's just like painting a huge oval. I mean, if you draw a dolphin from the side, it's a little bit easier because then you see the fin and you see all the other things. But but on this occasion, because of the shape of the dolphin, because of, uh, of its position, it, it was just like painting a huge oval. And you have to add certain highlights and shadows and lights to it uh, to give the impression that this is an animal. It was more difficult than I thought. I think I'd make it quite hard for myself. And I think I painted this over two days. And again, it's not finished, but I did enjoy it. And it's one of my favorite paintings. I will be finishing it in the future. I don't think the paper itself is archival, but I do believe that it's acid-free, which is important. And the reason why it's important for paper to be acid-free, even if it's not archival, is because acidity eats away at the pigment. It won't uh, get rid of the painting completely, but it will make the colors more sepia-ish or more yellowish or more black and white-ish, which is what happens when you know, the pigment loses light fastness. Now, in this case, most of the colors on this set are hues. Now, the difference between hues and pigments are that pigments are naturally sourced. So they will come from the earth itself, or they will come from insects or animals or plants. And of course, if you are a vegan, you might not be happy with that, which I understand. Because some insects, they crush to make carmine. The naturally sourced pigments are the ones that tend to be naturally light fast, because obviously they come from nature. Hues are this alternative, which is made synthetically slash artificially in a laboratory. So hues are naturally non-light fast. For those of you who aren't aware, light fastness is not just uh, affected by the ultraviolet rays of the sun. It's also affected by all kinds of other conditions, such as dust, humidity, acid, air pollution, etc. There's so many more. And all of these things affect the light fastness of a color. Usually when you have hues in a palette, that means that the colors were made cheaply either for student purposes or children purposes. This set is definitely not an artist's great set. It's definitely not light fast, not just because most of the colors are hues, but if it was light fast, it would have the light fast ratings on the box, which it doesn't. That doesn't mean that it's not a good watercolor set. If you want to sell your drawings, this one is not for you.
the ultimate question as part of this conclusion is do I recommend these to you and my general feeling is that I love the way it's designed I think it's really clever I had a lot of fun using these watercolors as I've already said in the video there is going to be a part two this is more of a first impression review than a final review because I need to experiment with these on a different type of paper but overall I would say if you want a cheap set of watercolors and you want to take it with you for traveling I think these are great I had a lot of fun with them I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint this dolphin and you have enjoyed this video and I had a lot of fun even though it was a painful process I still had a lot of fun making it so